The National Endowment for the Humanities is a longtime supporter and frequent partner of National History Day. Over the years, NEH and NHD have collaborated on a number of projects, including the development of History Day materials found on EdCitement, NEH's online platform for K-12 humanities teaching resources, and in this Ask an NEH Expert video series where we seek advice from NEH grant winners in educational and cultural institutions all around the country, asking these history professionals to speak about some of the skills they use every day, the same skills needed for a successful History Day project. I think students would be surprised how many experts in a variety of fields use Wikipedia as a jumping off point or a quick refresher if they're trying to prepare for something. So I think Wikipedia is a great place to start. I think it's the 800 pound gorilla in the room. We just have to admit that even if you're not trying to search Wikipedia, that's going to be the first thing that pops up. Wikipedia is great because it provides a quick and generally pretty thorough overview of most of the American history topics you might be looking into. But more importantly, if the entry is worth anything at all, when you scroll down to the bottom of a Wikipedia page, you're going to find tons of footnotes with links to where that information was found in the article, and then additional research suggestions, books, websites, online articles, all sorts of stuff that you can use. So Wikipedia is a great place to just figure out what the basics of a topic are and what you need to learn more about. Um, and then a great place to give you the pathway to find those additional resources. My only uh, warning for folks on Wikipedia is to remember that anyone can change Wikipedia at any time. I'm sure the students are very familiar with this. Um, so it's important to verify what you're reading with at least one other source if you're going to include it in your final research. There are a lot of good starting points online for understanding an overview of a topic. You can do that with Google. You could do that with Wikipedia. There's chat GPT. All of those are ways to maybe get the start of an idea. However, a really important part of contributing to history making is to get back to those primary sources, is to find kind of that essential question that you want to be contributing to. So part of it might be um, understanding what research has been done, uh, what information is out there, and then what information um, and what exploration still needs to occur, what needs to be better understood. So going to spaces um, like a Google or a Wikipedia first um, it is certainly an entry point, but then going that second step and going to maybe a space that allows you to take um, something that you learned at Google, Wikipedia, chat, GBT, um, like um, women's fashion in World War I and how it changes. And then you take that idea and you go to a secondary source like a book or like um, a fabulous uh, resource online and for World War I, that 1914, 1918 encyclopedia that has well-sourced, well-cited articles that you can read more information and you kind of fall down that rabbit hole. When you have some more of those information, some more of those ideas, maybe you go to a space like our museum and memorial, the National World War I Museum and Memorial, and you take a look for some of those primary sources and come up with your own question. Like, how was it that women, uh, reputable women, were able to start wearing pants in World War I? And you can find that starting point that deeper um, next level, and then dig down further into primary sources and reading the letters. Read the letters of women who were wearing pants on the front lines uh, and around the, the Western front and, and be able to draw those conclusions uh, for uh, lay learners, people who won't know as much about World War I as you will, because you have done all of those layers and levels of research. When you do your research, you'll find that uh, all of a sudden Mark Twain or Winston Churchill have said lots of things 
that they didn't actually say. Things might be attributed to someone that aren't real. It's really important to take a quote or to take an image and track it back to a reliable space that holds that original primary source. So track back your quote from Mark Twain. Don't trust the internet that Winston Churchill might have actually said something. And if you find a poster from World War I, uh, track it back to an original source, like the National World War I Museum Memorial, like the Imperial War Museum. Now, once you get to a space like that, you're gonna find that we have hundreds and thousands of posters to choose from to help you in your projects. Our curriculum library, our From the Sex library blog, and our Women at the Center blog. Those are the three spaces I recommend students start with. In each of our curriculum guides, there's going to be suggested activities at the bottom of every resource. There's also a place where you can click um, that source notes, so that'll tell you where we got the information. Um, and then in each of our curriculum guides, there's usually links to other institutions that helped us put together those collections. On the Women in the American Story website, there's a whole list of institutions that have provided us with uh, resources we've added to the website and helped us do additional research in the areas that they are in. Um, so it's just sort of digging around, usually in the about sections is where you're going to find more of that information. A great place to start is if you go to collections and research and you click at the online collections database. When you go to begin your search, you'll find that there are a lot of objects, posters and uniforms and photographs along with a variety of 3D objects that you can search through. In our collections database, which is Argus, there are two key ways to search. The first is through a keyword. So let's say you wanted to research uh, Ukraine. You would pull up a variety of information um, about the objects that we have that are connected to Ukraine. And there is, in fact, a World War I Ukraine and Russia connection, but I'll leave that to you to research. Also, in any sort of archive, you will likely find not only the object ID, also known as the accession number, you'll find tags uh, like this one, as well as descriptions um, of the object. You can also search by subject matter. So if you wanted to find out more about uh, the abdication of, uh, of a leader, there is a tagged item regarding abdications. If you go to our website, theworldwar.org, uh, you will find that we also have uh, a variety of articles about World War I. Uh, that you can take a look at, the essentials, military history, science and technology, art and culture. You'll also see that we've got a variety of short videos that really help you understand um, some topics more in depth. Additionally, you will find uh, that we have an entire YouTube channel filled with lectures uh, that are wow. available uh, for you to enjoy at cover a variety of topics, including military and strategy, U.S. entry into World War I, the Paris Peace Conference. Our Pershing Lecture Series looks at a lot of very specific military um, history and a lot of military engagements. We also have original film footage. So regardless of the website that you are going to, especially if they may have several platforms like a main website, a resource database, an online collections database, a YouTube channel. Be sure across all of those different query spaces that you do the exact same search. And you may find that in one spot, like the main website, it doesn't pull up what you were looking for, but in one of the other spaces, it would. That gives you a much fuller look at the resources that any organization might have.